Welcome to episode number 107 of If This Car Could Talk. We're so glad you joined us today and this week's feature car is actually a tour of the world's largest museum dedicated to firefighting and its colorful history. It's none other than the Hall of Flame, found right here in Phoenix. If you're in the area, it's certainly worth a visit. Today, Curator of Education Mark Moorhead will guide us through a tour of this fabulous museum. So sit back and enjoy today's feature and be sure to give the video the thumbs up and share it with everyone you know. Please feel free to leave a comment about anything you see today or whatever's on your mind. We always appreciate your comments and read every one of them. Without any further delay, here's Mark. Now, let's go for a ride. My name is Mark, M-A-R-K, Moorhead, M-O-O-R-H-E-A-D, and I am the Curator of Education at the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting here in Phoenix, Arizona. So the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting is the world's largest historical firefighting museum. Uh, we began, and when I say I'm using the editorial we there, it began in 1961. Uh, the seed of it was planted in 1955 back in Wisconsin, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Uh, a nice lady named Olive Getz gave her husband, a man named George Getz, a gift of a 1924 American LaFrance fire uh, truck uh, that was in 1955 and he had seen one and just kind of casually said oh, I'd be fun to have one of those so she arranged for her son to go back uh, to where they'd seen it in Wilmette Illinois and purchase it and somehow they kept it a secret from him they gave it to him you know what do you get for the man who has everything and he uh, but he developed a big interest in fire trucks and the history of firefighting and fire safety but he also acquired enough fire trucks in a really quite a short time uh, that by uh, December of 1961 they were able to uh, open a small museum and some crony of his said I ah, should call it the Hall of Flame and so he did and so we're the only museum that I know of whose name is a pun uh, but we have that was in Kenosha where the museum started and they were there for a uh, number of years and then they came out here the family business moved out here and they brought the collection with them and we've been in this location uh, where we are now in 19, uh, since 1973 and in that time we've gradually grown into the largest historical fire museum in the world there's something like 200 firefighting museums in the United States there are many in other countries as well but as far as we know we're the biggest and we're also comprehensive we're not parochial we uh, cover uh, the not just the Phoenix area in fact only a small portion of what we have is from here in Phoenix or Arizona we do have a few nice pieces but it's really about the whole world if you count our patch collection we have pieces from every continent even Antarctica and uh, we have the of course the large pieces the hand pumpers and the steamers and then the fire trucks are a big part of our appeal but we have also a lot of my favorite stuff actually is smaller exhibits things like helmets fire insurance marks we have a display that's of real historical significance in the fire service uh, from right here in phoenix arizona it's a dispatch center that was started in the 1950s by uh, a couple of phoenix firefighters and it involved an ibm punch card system and a big map of phoenix and it all looks rather quaint and primitive now but it was state of the art at the time and people came from all over the world uh, to check out this technology and take it back to their home uh, towns and so uh, that's part of what we have we also have a wildland gallery uh, which is devoted to smoke jumpers and hot shots. We have a wonderful truck from uh, the Los Angeles County Department of Forestry that served the Topanga Canyon area. Uh, that was for wildland fires. Uh, Topanga Canyon has this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of ritzy LA connotation now, but back in the 30s, it was actually still kind of a wilderness area. And this truck uh, built in Burbank in the early 1930s uh, was built to fight wildfires there. 
and uh, it was donated to us by Gene Autry, the cowboy star. He found it resting out on his property in Southern California somewhere and brought it to our late restorer, Don Hale, who re- brought it back to its former glory. And so that's a proud part of our collection. We have material on the smoke jumpers and the hot shots. We have an observation tower uh, from uh, northern Arizona. We have... Uh, all sorts of material and of course we do have material on some of the terrible tragedies that have befallen firefighters in this country we have a hall of heroes which is dedicated to firefighters going back uh, in some cases into the 1800s who died in the line of duty or were decorated for bravery but we have specific uh, exhibits there dedicated to the 9-11 uh, terrorist attacks in uh, Manhattan and also to the Yarnell Hill fire right here in Arizona, the, south of uh, Prescott, the, which took the life of 19 uh, young guys uh, from the Granite Mountain hotshots out of the Prescott Fire Department. And so we, we really try to present kind of a sweeping view. I mean, our oldest big piece is from 1725. I always tell the little kids. It was from seven years before George Washington was born. Uh, and all the way up to 2004, the Granite Mountain Truck is our one 21st century piece. So we try to present a, a pretty sweeping uh, presentation and, and we try to get it in there from all over the world. We have pieces from England, Germany, France. We have a couple pieces from the 1880s from Japan and some other artifacts from Japanese firefighting, which was a whole story unto itself. We have art pieces. We have uh, we have a sled from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Nagani, Michigan, a Studebaker sled that was used by uh, the fire department there in Nagani to take axes and ladders and hoses and men to a fire at a barn or a farmhouse out in the country. Uh, we have material on Dalmatians and their whole connection to the fire service. And then that's all just in Gallery 1. In Gallery 2 is where the trucks start. We have helmets from everywhere you can imagine you know cuba and saudi arabia and french west africa and switzerland and scotland and and uh, you know japan and all over the place so we got a lot to see you want to allow yourself some time when you come in we are open from tuesday through saturday from 10 a.m to 6 p.m we're closed to the public on sundays and mondays uh we are uh, a- able to book guided tours uh, and, and tour groups including guided tours so if you get together a nice group of around 10 people uh, or more we can uh, we can do a, a guided tour for you and of course we offer memberships but even a basic family membership is great especially if you have some kids you want to bring them in let them climb on the truck blow off a little steam and it's no harm no foul once you get that membership you can you, you can do that have them do that for free twice a week if you want or more and we'll be glad to see them and of course we have the inevitable gift shop that you enter and exit through and we certainly encourage people to unlimber their wallets for that will we accept a monetary donation you bet we will be very glad to take your money and uh that i mean just buying an admission ticket or by better yet buying a membership is really a great way of supporting the museum but also sometimes people do indeed just give us monetary donations and we're very glad to accept them it really helps us keep the programs here going Um, so that is a definite yes the donation of material once upon a time i would have said yeah absolutely get in touch with us and i still would say that but with a caveat that we're in a kind of a deaccessioning mode now we got pretty stuffed full of stuff vast majority of which was never going to go on display and we're uh so we're when we accept stuff now I and mean, people call and offer us trucks and it would have i'm not saying we wouldn't take some but it would mostly happen uh if we didn't have it if it was a kind of truck say that we didn't have especially larger pieces uh, we might consider, and if it was in good condition, our beloved restorer, Don Hale, uh, passed on a few years ago at the age of 94, and we can't do more than kind of minor restoration. So yeah, Grandpa had a fire helmet or something like that once upon a time. Yeah, sure, bring it on in. But we want people to understand 
that first of all we might have to say no just for the sake of space but even if we do accept it people do need to understand that when you give something to a museum it doesn't necessarily mean that it will go on display at all it also doesn't mean that it'll go on display anytime soon even if it will eventually so it's just something where you may find that you might prefer to keep it or you might uh, prefer to maybe try to sell it yourself Uh, having said that Always, if you think you might have something interesting, get in touch uh, because it might be something that we really, you know, that really is of significance and we wouldn't want to miss out on that. Well, we do have a small staff here. I'm part of it. My boss, the director, is part of it. Uh, And we have a handful of paid docents who run the front of the store and, uh, and are the cashiers when you come in and so forth. We also have a big core of volunteers. Most of them are retired or former volunteer, or in some cases, active duty firefighters. And uh, those guys and gals, we just depend on. We, we couldn't do, you know, four-fifths of what we do here if it weren't for the help. They donate a lot of extraordinary amount of time and uh, expertise and we uh, are able to do things uh, that would cost us you know god knows how many thousands of dollars if we had to if we had to go and have them done commercially Uh, so a lot of the construction that you see around here a lot of you know the big fire truck that is our front desk it was a former phoenix fire truck that was something that uh, the volunteers acquired from the phoenix fire academy they were getting a tour of the phoenix fire academy and they had the this front of this truck was leaned up against the wall and they admired it and the guy at the county's like ah the kids here don't pay any attention to it anyway you guys might as well take it and so they did they didn't have to be asked twice and they turned it into our front desk and they wired it up so that the lights flash and they didn't mercifully they didn't reattach the siren but uh they uh, and it's a big favorite of people when they come into the museum especially of course the kids we always blow their mind by flashing the lights at them and again that was just something that these guys dove into and uh, you know just spent all this time uh setting up for us so we're we would be you know really helpless and a totally bare bones operation if it weren't for our wonderful volunteers just the best bunch of guys. We had a restorer here for many years, a very, very highly skilled man named Don Hale. And uh, there is a display devoted to him here at the museum. Uh, Don was uh, a real interesting guy. He had apprenticed as a, as a very young man, really as a kid, uh, under his grandfather in Los Angeles back in the 1930s. Uh, his grandfather built period vehicles for the movies for MGM and Paramount and all of them. And he had a big fleet. And the guys that Don trained under back in those days were, he learned things like wheel writing and spoke making and axle making and all of that stuff. They were kind of, they were skills that even in the 1930s were already somewhat archaic. And he, later he went off, he fought in uh, World War II. He was in New Guinea in World War II in the United States Army, and uh, he did a lot of just crazy things. He was he built custom speedboats in Northern California, and he was with the San Luis Obispo, California Fire Department for many years. Uh, he eventually became an assistant chief, and he was not really an active duty firefighter. His job was w- working on the trucks and customizing the trucks when they purchased them. And so he learned, uh, in addition to f- this extraordinary rest- restoration and mechanical skills and gold leafing and uh, stuff for old 19th century vehicles, he could work on those as well. He also uh, had fire ex- department experience. And so he came to work here in the eighties when he was already getting up there in years and he restored all probably 80, 90% of the trucks you see out there. He did at least some restoration work on them. You can see a signature on quite a few of them. Uh, he took enormous pride in his work and he was just a real colorful kind of cantankerous guy. He was a lot of fun. Um, but he uh, didn't retire until he was well into his 90s. And he, he just he died about you know, seven years ago, something like that. And we miss him terribly. Uh, and, uh, but, and we did have a wonderful mechanic, a man from Uruguay named Pablo, who was also 
brilliant and could tool his own parts and all of that sort of thing but he's uh, since moved to rural mexico the another thing that we have here at the museum that is a big part of what we do is we do a lot of programs for kids we do one of the, my favorite things to do is story times where i read the kids a fun non-threatening story about fire safety and then i do a fire safety presentation and then it's you know we, we try to be smart about how we deal with the smaller kids it's uh, you know 80 percent play and 20 percent trying to teach them something so then they get to play on the truck and they get to play in our our kids area milo and moxie which are the little mascots little a little corgi and a, and a hummingbird that are the mascots uh, for fire safety for the arizona burn foundation and we're kind of a hub for distributing that material so they can get coloring books and things like that here but also there's a lot of great content just on the walls that they can learn about fire safety from milo and moxie and, of course, we have Smokey the Bear, uh, who is uh, our permanent kind of host in our Wildland Gallery. We have one of the original Smokey suits, and he's there for photo ops with the kids. We are very much supportive of the idea of the STEM and STEAM curriculum in schools here in Arizona. Uh, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math, if I'm getting it right. And then more recently, they've added an A, uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And we believe we're relevant to all of those, including arts. We're, you know, these pieces are masterpieces, some of them, of design, and they're beautiful. Uh, firefighting has been a big subject in the arts and prints and lithography all over the world. And also the pieces themselves are often, in my opinion, works of art and have murals and other kinds of design elements on them that are works of art. The patches are relevant. So even the even the arts part of it is, I believe, very much applicable uh, to our collection here. And so, yeah, all of that is programs that are available, and you can learn more about them by going to our uh, website, which is halloflame.org, halloflame.org, or you can just call us, 602 602- Two seven five three four seven three, and you can ask for me if you want more information on this. Really, almost anybody here can give you a lot of great information, but you can ask for Mark if you want specific information about our programs. Well, that concludes another episode of If This Car Could Talk, where the preservation and respectful presentation is as important as the items are themselves. We think this feature is a lot of fun. Be sure to give this video the thumbs up and share it with your friends. This next Saturday, on the 20th anniversary observance of the tragic events on September 11, 2001, we're bringing you an incredible piece of firefighting history when we respectfully bring you the museum's Rescue 4 truck that was actually there in response to these horrific scenes that if you're old enough, remember so well. Please join us for this special Saturday video and help us pay respects to all who perished following the attacks on our country.